Hello everybody and welcome back to another modern gameplay video and Kamigawa Neon Dynasty is finally here and we're kicking it off today with some Demir Vehicle Tribal. Now I'm assuming a lot of you guys are new here so nice to meet you. My name is Marin and we play Wacky Modern Brews every single Monday and Friday and we've been doing that for four years. So if you want to see every possible modern viable Kamigawa Neon Dynasty card played in modern then make sure to subscribe if you're new because that's all we do every Monday and Friday. And uh, we're currently live on twitch.tv slash mavenbird. Yes, if you have not yet heard, we did change it from Maven Dragon to Maven Bird on all socials. So yeah, that's, that link's down below if you want to come and hang out on Saturday afternoons. Actually, we might change the schedule to Fridays. I'm not too sure yet. I'll keep you guys updated on that. Um, anyways, kicking it off with some Demir vehicles today. And let's do a question of the day as we usually do. Uh, I think I'm going to do the same question of the day as we did in the last video. So the question of the day is what Kamigawa card or cards do you want to see me brew around here? What do you want to see played on the channel? Let me know in the comments down below because I'm currently brewing a lot of Kamigawa stuff and I need some ideas. All right, so vehicle tribal. Uh, we got three different vehicles in here, uh, including uh, returning old vehicles, the infamous unbanned smuggler's copter. And then let's talk about high speed hover bike first because it's pretty straightforward. It um, It's a 2-2 flash flyer and when it enters the battlefield it can tap target creatures so it can help you win the race. No pun intended because it's vehicles. Um, but it can help you win the race by tapping down their attacker and then it gives you the momentum to then be the aggressor. So I, I thought it'd be a pretty good dude. And then the main vehicle that we're trying out here is going to be Mind Link Mech. I'm really excited for this one. It's a three drop, four, three flyer with crew one, super easy to crew, but when it's crewed, it becomes a copy of the creature that crewed it, except it's a four, three flyer. So that's gonna be good with some of the stuff we got going on here. Now we do need a lot of, um, you know, like one drop creatures to be able to crew our vehicles pretty easily because they're at the higher end of our curve. We need our crewers to be one drops, um, preferably. So we got a few things. Um, let's talk about the things that we want Mindlink Mech to copy first. So we got three different things here. We got Knight of the Ebon Legion, which it says, um, at your end step, if a player lost four or more life this turn, it gets a one, one counter. So if this vehicle copies that it's a four, three flyer, so it's going to deal the four damage that it needs for itself to get a one, one counter. Plus if we need it to be, if we needed to get plus three, plus three, we can pump it and it's a flyer. So it can be really good late game damage. Um, the next thing is night market lookout. This thing was printed in Kaladesh with the introduction of vehicles because it's really good at crewing because when it becomes tapped, when it crews, you're going to drain and gain the opponent for one. And that's another solid thing for Mindlink Mech to copy because when it goes attacking, it's also considered tapping and it's going to drain and gain for one. So it's just an, a, an extra drain and gain there. And then the last thing we want to copy is Vault Scourge. Vault Scourge is just a 1-1 one, one flying lifelink and it's it's an artifact. And uh, yeah, that'll make this thing a lifelinker, which is pretty solid. But the reason we got Vault Scourge and the reason we got this um, sl Silver Raven, which is just an ETB scry one flyer, is because they're artifact creatures. And the reason we need those to be artifact creatures and the reason we got Dark Souls Citadel and Miss Vault Bridge as indestructible artifacts is because we got Insult Artifact and Skilled Animator. These things can turn an artifact into a 5-5. Five -five. So, you know, this will be a 5-5 five -five flyer. This will be a 5-5 five -five flyer. These will be 5-5 five -five indestructibles. So that is the whole reason that we got those. And then also these things can um, man up a vehicle and turn them into whatever. And that also works as well. So, and then we got some removal and fetal push. And then onto the board, or we got a 21 total lands and onto the sideboard. Um, we got Thoughtseize just in case our fatal pushes do nothing and we need to bring some hand description over it. And then we got Feed the Swarm as just our enchantment hate piece and also more creature removal. We got Ashiok to stop searchy decks like primetime decks. And then we got Graf Digger's Cage for the Grave, which is another thing that you can suit up with the Insoul artifacts. So we got a few artifacts on the board to suit up with Insoul and Skilled Animator. Um, speaking of which, Pie the Needle can shut down Walkers and Urza Saga, Curse Totem for, um, you know, the Elves and Heliod Spike Feeder decks and stuff of that nature, I guess. Damping Sphere for Tron, mainly. Dragon's Claw for Burn. And then Void Mirror for um, Cascade, for Tron. Eldrazi Tron, preferably. So yeah, a lot of artifact base hate in the board so that you got more things to suit up with these. All right, so that was a pretty long introduction, but uh, let's get on to the gameplay. But first, a quick word for our supporters. This video has been made possible by our generous supporters over on Patreon, whose names have been scrolling down below. If you would like to join the Patreon as well, the link is down below.
And if you need to pick up some magic cards, TCGplayer.com's got you covered. You can find them through our deck list link down below and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some magic online, you should sign up with Mana Traders using the code that's listed in the description to save 15% and you can rent and play all the magic decks you want. It is what I personally use to make my videos. And with that, let's get on to the video. Hope you enjoy. All right, got a game here against Voljazz and we're going to be on the play here with some Demir vehicles. This is going to be a keep that looks pretty good. We can copy up a Vault Scourge. Although, do I start on Silent Raven? I guess I do need to scry into a third land, so I guess I start on Silent Raven. Or Silver Raven, rather. So, for those who, who don't know and, and skipped, skips intros all the time, I did announce that I changed the, 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 the Dragon Sona to a bird, Maven Bird. And the the naming of this Sona has been a mind-boggling experience. I just ended up on Maven Bird because it's the most understandable, it's the most universal, everyone will understand it. Like, the character is not a raven, so I couldn't name it Maven Raven. That, that would be pretty cool. But unfortunately, my character is not a raven. Um, uh, do I just flash in the high-speed hover bike? I don't think so. Let's just get a basic swamp here and we will go for another, or let's go for another Raven to look for our third land drop. Skilled animator to the bottom and then night market lookouts. Working. All right, good luck with work. Dude, where's my lens? All right, I'm gonna flash in, I'm gonna flash in the uh, high-speed hover bike now. I mean, these these dudes are holding down, they're, they're beating down pretty good. Night Market Lookout, like being able to drain and gain on attack, hitting for two and you gain one. Like he actually is a really good one drop. It's just, people never play this card. I think it's just because it's a one one, so it'll trade with literally anything. And if there's any blocker, it will be able to block this. That's, that's the problem with it. It doesn't trade very well, but it attacks pretty well. Like as a one drop, it attacks pretty good. Okay, it looks like the opponent is on like some kind of um, wilderness reclamation. Uh, Rokiric. All right, that's fine. I can tap that down. Stammans. All right, let's tap this guy down. Oh my goodness! All right, well let's uh let's actually insole our hover bike here. We're getting in for some chonky damage here. They're at two. They're in some trouble. And like this Night Market Lookout can literally just crew the last, like if they manage to produce enough blockage, this just crews and crews and just drains them. <laughs> like this card is like really solid when you're running vehicles because it just, it's good for that last bit of chip damage if the board gets clogged up. Want to try the Black Ragavan? What what's the Black Ragavan? Well, is there is there another one, one drop that steals cards? Yo, what up, Zach? Um, Punk Rock Zach. How's it going? Good to see you again. It still blows my mind that you're still here. Like you've been you've been watching the stream for like four years. It's crazy. All right, opponent skips it up onto the board. They're probably gonna bring in some artifact hate. Um, I should probably bring in. Feed the swarm is not good for Scion of Draco. Um, it'll make me lose eleven life. So I don't know. I don't think I pie the needle on fetch lands. I think I just run it back the same. Even though Fatal Push is not going to be that good. Fetch 
Fatal, yeah, Fatal Push is not going to be great. The only way to proc um, Revolt is Polluted Delta. So why am I even running this card? I should be running Blood Chief's Thirst. I'm just going to... I mean, Void Mirror stops Cascade. And they are running like a play set of, of Shardless Agent and Blood Raid Elf, right? I mean... Push is going to be hard to use. Like, everything they have is like CMC. I mean, it can kill... No. Let's just run it back the same. This push can still kill the two-drop um, Gruul dude. The, the two-drop 5-5 five five guy. Guten Morgen, Morgenkorn. Why is your... Why is your, like, Discord... Your Discord status, ich bestaubadish. Like, is it like some discretion? I don't know. Was ist mich mit deinem Zeus in Ektarze fillen? Is das du willst? Honestly, it's crazy content, con content friendship that I fell into. I wanted. Wait, did I submit? I wanted MTG modern content that wasn't always the same meta BS. Stayed for the personality early YouTube. You had some content. MS Paint 101 tutorial. Yeah, that's true. You remember that. I liked how willing you were to help. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of teaching. I like the, uh, the gratification I get out of teaching somebody something. Like... You know, if if somebody asks how to play magic or how to how to be good at competitive Pokemon, I'm I'm happy to like give all the advice I can. I get really excited about teaching when I get the opportunity to teach someone something. It just makes me feel good to like spread knowledge. I feel like I'm a teacher in another life. Dragon Rage Channeler. Um, okay, let's, let's actually go Night Market Lookout. I think, um, if they, like, produce Delirium here, they're just gonna swing at me and I'll be able to get in and gain a life. Like, and I don't mind offering the trade here, because I don't think they'll trade DRC for Night Market Lookout, so I can start gaining some life. They're really gonna offer this trade. I'll take it. I mean... I don't think they're gonna like on the spot make delirium right now. I'm not buying it. That's not happening. I'll take this trade. Like I have the far better late game. Actually, no, no, no. They're they're domain zoo. Never mind. They have the better late game. But I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, Misfall Bridge, and then I guess we throw out another one. Or do I go Vault Scourge so that I can like insoul it? But they can uh, Tribal Flames it. Mind Link Mech. I definitely want Mind Link Mech to copy a. Okay, let's let's go Night Market actually, but I definitely want Mind Link Mech to copy up the Vault Scourge to get Life Link. I think the the chunks for four of Life Gain is gonna be good here. It's gonna be Gucci as flames. All right, Express Iteration. It means I'm pollinating you. Yeah, but like what? I don't know what that expression means though. Ich bestaubadish. Like, I don't know if it's like a saying that I don't, I'm not aware of. Ich bin ein bien. I'm a bee? It's a very rude cartoon. Oh, so it's like Happy Tree Friends. Have you ever seen Happy Tree Friends? All right, let's uh, get out this Mind Link mech. And uh, let's go attacking for one here. Dude, this little drain in game for one is so clutch. Like we just turn the, the the life totals around basically. Where's where the bee does mean stuff to a flower? Oh the bee. Oh, okay. I'm starting to catch your drift. When radio silent during the time you were on the Destiny grind. Dude, Destiny's great. You should get on Destiny because Witch Queen is coming out on the 22nd. It's coming out in 12 days, starting today. All right, well, I think I'm going to go Vault Scourge and crew that up on the Mind Link mech, right? 
Do I have a better play? Okay, you know what? I'm I'm doing it. And then I think I'm just going to end soul on on the Misfall Bridge. Or do I just uh hold on. Hold on. I could I could and soul in the Misfall Bridge now and then crew up the Night Market Lookout and go swing in for nine and then drain and gain for two. Maybe that's the play. All right, let's do that. Drain and gain, crew up, turn into a copy of Night Market Lookout, go attacking, drain and gain again. This is aggro as heck. This is the more aggressive play. This is like the play that's gonna benefit me least as the game goes on, but it's the play that's good now. They're actually chumping. Okay, well, that was a success. I'm very happy I did that. Now I have a 5-5 indestructible, so that's gonna be tough for them to deal with. I don't think, I mean, they could have prismatic ending to hit that right there, but then my mind league mech is still getting in. So it's fine if they prismatic ending this. Oh, they're gonna prismatic on my mind link mech. Oh, they're going to Thieving Skydiver. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's go with uh, Vault Scourge. And then we'll go Silent Raven. Uh, Miss Vault Bridge to the bottom because I need an untapped, untapped land here. All right. Let's crew up with the Vault Scourge. Get that lifelink going. See if they want to trade off for my night market lookout. They chump on my vault scourge. Okay, they go to six. I go back up to 15. If I can get that untied land and skilled animator can turn vault scourge into a 5-5 five five flag lifelink. So that, that would be very, very good. Please, deck. Do not mana screw me. <laughs> There's a Shardless Agent. That's why I was considering bringing in Void Mirror. Get a Utopia Frog, not the worst. Actually, that's the best case scenario. Happy Tree Friends is a good comparison. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, gory. It's like, it looks like a cute cartoon, but it's actually like extremely gory. Like, if you're watching, like, look up Happy Tree Friends at your own risk. I, 18 plus, please. Or else it'll it'll get you all queasy. It's a it's a gore cartoon, so keep that in mind. All right. Um, I think I just take this hit here. Yeah, let's take the hit. Untap land. Push is not bad. All right. Well, let's um. Let's turn it into a Vault Scourge again. Oh, no, no, no. We win if we turn it into a Flyer. So ta use the Night Market Lookout. And then we just swing in the air for six. We get in for another two. So that's over Lethal right there. Yo, got him. Let's check the chat, see if they're giving us the GGs. Like... All right, we got him. Took down five color domains, you. Solid. Nice. And now that we're partway through the video, if you felt it deserved a like, a comment, or a share, I'd really appreciate it. It helps grow the channel. All right, thank you. Got a game here against Blue, Caw Blue Claw Red, and we're going to be on the draw with some Demir Viacles. That is going to be a mulligan on the one lander. We keep getting a lot of one landers today. I mean, we are playing a 21 land deck, so I don't think that should happen much. All right, let's keep this, and now we can toss one of our lands, which is probably going to be a Polluted Delta. Nothing? All right, Stomping Grounds and Wadden Kettle. So they're probably playing uh, the Ryona Boros Commander card, whatever it's called. 
Get out night market, look out to start gaining and draining. All right, so they're getting the cattle online. I'm gonna bash for three. I think Rizona is her name. What, what is that? Uh, they're probably like blood braiding cats getting into Arizona. Arizona. It's a new Kamigawa card. It's the Boros three drop three three haster that is, gets indestructible. You know what I'm talking about. If you've looked at the spoilers at all, Boros chick. Burning tree into bushwhack. Mama, Mama Morphos. Into another Nacatl, into Curd Ape, Goblin Guide. Nothing. All right. Take three. And uh, Smug Cop. And I think we just have to stay back here and threaten to block the uh, burning, burning Tree Emissary. So let's just stay back here. They'll probably just bolt my smug cop here. Pell Collector. Good thing they didn't play that on the first turn. It'd be a 3-3 three, three by now. Oh, they're even getting under the burning tree. All right, crew. Drain and gain for one. Block and loot. All right. Loot it up. Ditch the... Dark Soul Citadel. Pell Collector gets a counter. Dark Slick Shores. Play Vault Scourge. And Crew Up. And let's push the um, push the Pell Collector so that my Night Market Lookout can get in. Drain and gain, loot. Stop giving me lands. All right, dish polluted delta. They're down to nine. I'm at 13. I got multiple forms of life gain, so I'm kind of counteracting their, their swings a bit here. Burning, emissary, burning tree emissary again. Bushwhack. They have one card left, and it's nothing. They have nothing, okay? They're still, they're still getting in there. Please, Dad, give me something. I'm getting so flooded. All right, let's crew up with the Night Market Lookout. Drain and gain. Go to combat. Get in there for four. Loot. Okay, that's something. All right, ditch the polluted delta. I gain a life. And now I'm going to get a big O indestructible boy. All right, which one's newly controlled? This one? So that one is not, okay, it doesn't matter. A skilled animator on the 5-5 five, five indestructible. Boom. All right, if they don't have a lightning bolt here, then they have no chance. It's over if they don't have bolt to hit my skilled animator. And I even have lethal in the air with the smug cop and the vault scourge. All right, block the burning tree, block the cattle. Do they have a become immense? No become immense. All right, cool. Oh, and icing on the cake. We get an in soul artifact. Don't mind if I do. And uh, crew up here with a skilled animator and just destroy their face. It is so over. They're gonna bolt themselves. Gonna bolt yourself? They're bolting the smug cop. <laughs> they couldn't go out without bolting the smug cop. Drain and gain. Obliterate. Exodia. All right. Um, I don't why I don't know why they're playing Mama Morphos in there that does not fit in with Zoo, but maybe they're playing something that that requires spell casty stuff. All right. Um. What do I want here? Feed the swarms, maybe, but we're on the draw and life loss removal on the draw is a little sketch. Um, so I probably just submit right back. 
I mean, feed the swarm on a Nakatl's technically profit. I feel like... All right, I mean, it makes it makes sense. Cut a ribbon and... I keep calling it ribbon on a high-speed hover bike. Stop it with the one landers. Why is every single hand today a one lander? All right, Mully and the one lander. All right, keep that one and we'll ditch probably watery grave because I don't want to shock. This I can fetch a basic and only lose one life. Yeah. Oh, Boglin guide. <laughs> they, the, scry, the good old Mono scry bug. All right, well, we're going to slam Night Market Lookout to start gaining a little bit of this life back. And the next turn, we can probably try to play like a painless Vault Scourge. And then once I get down the Mind Link mech, I can make a copy Vault Scourge so that I can get a big old life linker. Little chonky boy. Hidden Herbalist. Oh, Herbalists. Multiple. I just now noticed there's multiple. And kicking a bushwhack. Oh, that's that's why they have Manomorphos, because when they get hit an herbalist, then they can still kick a bushwhacker. That's why. I'm not going to trade for the bushwhacker. I'm just going to take this. Down to 10. And soul artifact. Oh, I want to put that on the Vault Scourge. Um, yeah, I think let's do a painless Vault Scourge here. And risk pinging for one. I I don't think I want to trade this, so get in for one. Gain one. Or get in for two and gain one, rather. And hopefully survive. And if I do, I can insult this Vault Scourge. Please. Please. Don't kill it and don't kill me. They have four cards. Oh my goodness. I'm in the danger zone. For sure. Please. Okay, they didn't shock. That's a good start. No! No! Can I even live now? Is there any way I survive? All right. So, so, sli, silver Ribbon, I said Silent again. Why can I not say this card correctly today? Oh my goodness. Uh, Night Market to the Grave, we need removal. Play this guy. And we can, we can live on one here. Um, yeah, it's just, let's just pass. I did want to gain one there, but I'm in bolt range too. Keep that in mind. But I'd rather keep this to double block something. Oh, kick in another bushwhacker. Now I have to chump, chump, chump. This is bad. This is really bad. Yeah, there's no, there's no way. All right, scoop. Onto the board. We're on the play now, which makes me feel a little bit better. Is Feed the Swarm the way to go? I don't think so, honestly. It wastes the whole turn. Sorcery speed makes me lose life still. And I'd rather have the hover bike for tempo and just give me back this silent silver ribbon. Oh my goodness. What is wrong with me today? I can't say the word silver. 
every single round today have said it wrong. <laughs> it was just like when I first played uh, Merc Tide Region, and I, I kept calling it Merc Fiend Region because I was so used to the word Merc Fiend because from uh, that Simic card, Merc Fiend uh, Leech. And I had it stuck in my head. Um, let's keep this. And, um, well, let's just Vault Scourge here. I might have to shock a Watery Grave. I don't like it, but I think I have to. Cause I need I need uh, both of my colors right now, and they're starting on the worst thing. Oh, that's tough. Okay, there we go. That that helps a bit. Play the smug cop. I could I could stay back here and threaten to block. Yeah, I think I do that. I think I just stay back and and threaten to block. But they're just gonna smash my- okay, but at least I'm forcing them to smash my smug cop. I need to force the play. If not, they're just gonna take advantage of me later on, when it matters most. Burning tree. Hit Nerbalist. I'm watching them metamorphose into Bushwhacker. And another Burning Tree. Whack. Destructive Revelry. Yikes. Okay, but that ups the chances of my Vault Scourge living. So now I can uh, skill the animator on my Vault Scourge and make it a 5 5 life linker. So let's uh, let's do that. Let's go get a basic swamp here and skilled animator on my vault scourge. Do I get in or do I stay back? I think I get in. Chunk them down to ten, and I'm back up to eighteen. Two more hits and I win. Since they already use one destructive revelry, uh, that ups my chances of the Vault Scourge living. So they gotta have a Smash to Smithereens or another destructive revelry, which I think the chances are low. They only got one card left. I feel like we're in a good spot. They're getting in for eight. Good thing they didn't have a Tarkus Command as their last card. All right, um, let's play Double Knight of the Ebon Legion and just hold up high speed hover bike. Get him with Vault Scourge and pass. Oh, and I get two counters. Beautiful. They they can block their two twos. That is so annoying for them. Unless they get a bushwhack. And they're fetching down to four. This is it. Everything or nothing. This is the final turn. One of us is about to die. Double red. Double red. If it's double red, it's a whack. They did not kill my skill animator. Okay, let's let's respond and grab a basic island and then why did they kill the knight? Why did they kill the knight? Why not the skilled animator? That's what's making my thing a 5-5. Five five. All right, tap down their pelt collector and uh, crew up with the one they're killing.
This thing dies. I knew it. I knew it. You still should have hit the skilled animator. That spelled your fate. You could have lived. You could have won if you bolted the skilled animator. I'm living here, right? Yeah, I, I just take the rest and win. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I got there. Oh my goodness, that was a nail biter. But we took down good old Naya Zoo, 8 whack. Different way of playing 8 whack that isn't goblins. I mean, it's got goblin guides, so it's kind of goblins, but that was sweet. That was a really good game. GG. Got a game here against uh, Make Jank Great Again, and we are going to be in the play here with some Demir vehicles, and that is a one-lander, so it's Mulligan. And that one is not a one-lander, so we'll keep it, I guess. And um, let's toss away the Miss Vault Bridge. And let's start on Yield Vault Scourge. All right, let's continue this conversation that Star, Star Blazer said. Okay, we're going to start from the beginning since half of that conversation was like in a game that's not even in the video. So let's start from the beginning. I grew up with a brother who was 11 months older than me. So as kids, whenever there was a new game about we would, it would be fun for us to get into any new game or new new hobby or new thing because we could do it with each other and we're around the same age, we're both kids. And so we were playing, we grew up playing card games like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! So when MTG came around, we, we jumped right on it. It was when I was 14 and my brother was 15 and his friend got him into MTG. And then my brother came home and brought MTG to me. Like, he had like a stack of cards, like a stack of bulk from Alara, from the Alara block that his friend gave him because that was like standard at the time. And uh, we split the cards. Like what we did is we went in his bedroom and put the cards all on the down on the floor, face down on the carpet. And we would take turns picking a card and picking a card. Like it was completely randomized. And then we would have our own magic cards and then from there we built our decks and, and we spoke to my brother's friend John over the phone and like asked him how to play as we were on the bedroom floor playing and we were just learning on the phone and that we were learning MTG there and we learned more and more and got better at it and about a year later it was when um when uh the uh, one of my brother's friends took us to our first tournament at a game store and so we went to that and I got destroyed but it was fun and we kept doing it and it just spiraled from there and I never like it snowballed from there and I never stopped and then um like I had always wanted to be a Pokemon YouTuber ever since 2012 I was inspired by a YouTuber that I still watch today like that I still I've been watching this YouTuber forever his name is Shady Penguin um, Penguin has two ends at the end if you want to look them up. Shady Penguin on YouTube. And I've been watching Shady Penguin forever. Since the very, like, since he had like 24,000 su subscribers is when I started watching him. And he has like over half a million now. So I was one of the OGs. And he inspired me to want to do YouTube in the first place. And, uh, yeah, that, and then like when, when MTG happened and I got really into MTG, I was like, maybe I'd be a, an MTG YouTuber and not a Pokemon YouTuber. And then um, like I, I'd always, I've always grown up uh, poor. I, I grew up in poverty. And so I never really had money. But when, uh, when I was in 2018, at the very beginning of 2018, we went to visit my, my grandma. We call her Candy Grandma. She's, she's the grandma on my Korean side. And she's, she's a really nice lady, but she's a little bit too nice. She's like really generous, like more generous than she should be. So whenever we visit her, she just like gives us things, gives us money. And, and she gave us money this one time at the beginning of 2018. And combined with a little bit of, I've been saving from work, from working at a grocery store, um, I had, 
I was thinking like, is this finally it? Is like, now that I have a little bit of money here, is it finally time to buy a computer? Like, is, is, is this my opportunity? And I, I jumped at it. I was like, I'm doing this, I'm committing. I, I've always wanted to do this ever since 2012. And so I, I had my computer parts. Like I had some, cause I worked in a, a computer warehouse. And so I had like, I had my own free motherboard and that I'm still using right now. Like I've never got another PC since, but yeah, I had like a free case I got from my um, warehouse too. And then like I bought the rest of the pieces I needed and I built my own PC and um, are right, going up against infect here. So let's uh, bring in thought season feed this one, I guess. Hold on, let's, let's do some sideboarding real quick. Um, whatever, let's do that. So then, um, January 29th is when I started my YouTube channel. Uh, January 29th, uh, uh, 2018 is when I started my YouTube channel. And, uh, I, I put myself on a strict schedule and never miss uploads. And to this day, I, I've stuck to that schedule and I've never taken a break and I've just been going at it 100%. And when I lost my warehouse job in, um, in, or no, it might've been my channel fireball job. I did work at channel fireball. I don't know what, what it was one of the times, but yeah, like it was September of 2019. Am I keeping this? Yeah, let's keep it. September of 2019. And I lost my last IRL job. I got fired. I got fired from basically every job I ever worked at. I don't know. I'm a terrible worker. Um, and that is when I committed to, to just YouTube is my job. I, I don't need IRL jobs anymore. YouTube is my job. I'm committing to streaming and making videos. And that is where it like took off from there. And it's my job to this very day. So that, that is how to answer star blazers question in the full story. That's how I became an MTG YouTuber. All right, I think let's go Smuggler's Copter here. Opponent's username is Make Jank Great Again, and uh, but they're not playing Jank. All right, let's um, I guess let's go Vault Scourge, and look and loot for our loot for our land drop here. All right, we are going to loot away one of these high-speed hover bikes. And I think let's hold up a high-speed hover bike here. Or you know what? I think I'm just going to insole something. No. I don't know. You know what? Let's, um, I don't know. All right, I'm going to insole my, my Vault Scourge. I'm going to do it. That might be dumb, but we'll see. Cause I want my fair, I want to keep my three lands just in case I whiff my land drop. Um, it would be not very aggressive to insult the smuggler's copter. It would be least aggressive to do that because I would have nothing to crew it here. Dang it. I'm so torn. Like I'm, I'm playing this horribly. Okay, you know I'm I'm do, I'm just gonna drop out the mind link mech here. Let's just get in there and drop out the mind link mech. It could be a mistake to to go shields down and not hold up high speed hover bike and fatal push here. Veil of summer to draw a card. They have a full grip. Like how are they not killing us? They have a full grip. Yo, what's up, Jacovo? Good to see you again. You're still a mod here. You've been a mod for a super long time. Your donation link to your Twitch bio returns a 404. Oh, it's still a Maven Dragon. Oh. Let me see. I gotta I gotta fix that in the next stream, probably. Or I can probably fix it in between rounds or something. Alright, let's go Vault Scourge. Actually, let's go Knight of the Ebon Legion. And, uh, 
crew up with the Mind Link mech on the Night of the Ebon Legion. Screw it, let's also go... Okay, yield there. Let's also play the Vault Scourge and crew up the Smuggler's Copter. Just go a little bit more shield down. And crew up the uh, Smuggler's Cop. The Smug Cop. And get in there for lethal and see if the opponent's got any interaction. We get to loot here. They're going to crew up. Okay, they're going to push on the Vault Scourge. Sure. We loot. Um, let's loot away the hover bike because I think that Skilled Animator is a good play to win the game next turn. Okay, we get in for the damage. Our guys get counters. And they're going to Veil of Summer. <laughs> All right, this has to be the turn they go for it. They have no more time to waste. Like, they have to win right here. They just can trip. They got to find the fourth land, crew up, and use two pump spells. And they have no window of protection. Like, they have to go shields down completely, or else they can't get enough damage in. Like, they have to go scale up Might of Old Croza and completely tap out. And at which point I can just push. So I think I got them by the balls here. Got a M Moderna booster today, pretty hammered. Oh yeah, I got triple Moderna. I got I got three. I wish I could mix and match because then I would have more avenues of protection in my body. But I ended up getting triple Moderna. And yeah, the third the first two shots hardly affected me. Like they they I was like immune to them. Like I didn't get sick at all. But the third one, the the booster, it bopped me. Like I I was feeling terrible. Um, all right, we are going to submit it right back, I guess. How viable is 8-Rack at the moment? 8-Rack's always been viable. 8-Rack's always been good. It's never been bad. This hand is a little too slow for my liking. I think I'm going to mulligan. Uh, this one's got a push. Okay, I think I keep this one, and I think I have to throw away the high-speed hover bike. Because I want to keep my three mana. I want to keep the Mind Link mech with something to crew it, so I, I guess hover bike is the expendable card. Alright, Ignoble. I'm not going to push that. I want to, and you should always bolt the birds, but against Infect, I think that defies all logic, and I think you should just um, push the Infect creatures. I should not be a mod still. I know, right? Like, you you're, you used to be here every single stream, but it's it's been a while. Alright, I'm definitely going to push this Crusader. So let's let's just fetch a basic swamp here and do that. Push the crucidor and play vault scourge. Uh, Plague Stinger. Okay. I have a feeling we're going to be dead here. Let's just play our Mind Link mech. And do I just hold up crew? You know, I think I actually have to hold up the Mind Link mech crew and block. Like, and force them to use a pump spell. They're going to eat my Mind Link mech, but I think... I'm forced to make them waste their spells so that I have a better chance of living the following turn. I just got to find more removal in the meanwhile. 
All right, let's crew up our mech. They get exalted. I'll block and make them use a spell. And blossoming defense. I can still block. I can, like, if they're pumping just to trade, that's a two for one for me. Okay, I mean, that was a really good outcome. Now, I just need ways to win, though. That's the problem. I need, I need to win conditions. I'm getting in there because I don't think I'm going to block the Ink Moth. I want to save my crewers. They are taking it. Hold on, turn off, turn off a lot of yields. I want to pretend like I have a push. So if I pretend, if I bluff a push here, then they cannot use a pump spell. So I'm just gonna take it and force them to just keep on holding up their their protection. Oh my goodness, deck, please! I only have 21 lands in here. And I drew seven lands. A friend of yours in college got you an MTG? Yeah, that's that's a story I often hear is people getting them into it in college or high school or whatever. That's a typical. I feel like that's the way most people got into magic. All right, I'm going down to one. So I have to block now. If they have any pump spell, I die. I don't think they're gonna, they're gonna risk it though. They are going for it. Okay, I just got Omega, I just got Omega flooded there. That was unfortunate. We had a lot of good conversation though. Maybe we'll keep that in the video. All right, GG. All right, got a game here against Direwolf87, so we're probably going to need to go to sideboard and grab our Cursed Totem or else we have no chance. Um, all right, this is going to be a... That first one was a mulligan. This one's going to be a keep, and I think we're throwing probably the high-speed hoverbike. Because I need push for their mana dork. Mindling mech is something to look forward to. You know, maybe I actually toss the mindling mech and go for the insole plan. I think I'm doing that. I'm on two lands, so I know I can do this anyways. Like, I need to bolt the birds. So we all know Direwolf is the elf player. The elf player of Moto. If there's anyone labeled as the elf player on Moto, it's Direwolf. All right. Um, oh, I'm I'm on the play. Okay, cool. That was on the draw. All right. So Silver Raven, Dark of Citadel. I'll keep it. I don't mind having another land drop. I'm probably gonna end up insoling that Dark Steel Citadel. Red and Kitty Combs, Elvish Mystic, Temple Garden. Oh, they're playing Trellisara Sisters. Okay, um, let's get in with the Silent Raven and just flash in the hover bike, I guess. I do want to push the Soul's Attendant, but I just don't have the time for that right now. Chalasera? It is. Okay, I definitely need to push that. It's not getting them life at the moment, so I'll have to take a smack or two from it before I kill it. All right, EOT, hover bike. Tap down, Chalasera. Untap. Ooh. All right, maybe we got a little change of plans here. Little change of plans. 
I think we're gonna insole up the the silver raven because I just drew the Knight of the Ebon Legion to crew this high speed hover bike. They get to scry a bunch. But I'm chunking in for 7, bringing them down to 11. And my Knight of the Ebon Legion gets a 1-1 one, one counter. And uh, push at the ready. Things aren't looking too bad. I do want to draw another creature to crew with, though, because I can start attacking with the Knight itself. Trellisaurus is staying back. Alright, little do they know. It's going to get pushed fetally. Nothing, no two. Oh, ho, 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 another in soul, you say. Oh, okay. I think I have to do that. I think screw push. I think I just go for in soul and then crew of high speed hover bike and just smash in there for lethal. I think that's what I do. Please tell me you're not going to path it. Chunk. They chump, so I didn't have to push it after all. And Tamio safekeeping gains hexproof and indestructible when you gain two life. Okay. Cool little uh, brand new Kamigawa protection spell for Soul Sisters, I guess. But does Soul Sisters really need a protection spell? Because it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty go wide deck. I, I feel like they can handle not needing protection because they got like Ranger of Eos to go wide, and Ranger Captain of Eos as well. My Knight of the Abaddon Legion gets another counter. Target player. Oh my goodness. Am I dead? Is that Exaxes? No, wait. wait. Wait, wait, wait. It gets plus X plus X for X is amount of life you gain this turn. Okay, are they trying to like Chaplain's Blessing or like Rest for the Weary? That's cool. <laughs> Double push. I mean, let's get in there. Got him. All right, cool. That was spooky. So it's like, it's basically like Infect Sisters. <laughs> so they're like trying to... Okay, they accidentally did the reveal because, you know, Watsy never fixed it. It just reveals hands. So now we get to see information. Angel of Vitality and the Johnny's Pride Mate. All right, well, give me Feed the Swarm. And uh, don't need Curse Totem after all because they're not on elves today. It's crazy. The last two times we played against Direwolf, they weren't on elves. It's kind of mind-blowing. So Feed the Swarm and cut a Silent Raven and the Hover Bike. All right, let's do it. So the good thing about this is that they're probably on a pretty interaction light deck. I do have to fear getting one shot by those shenanigans again, but I have a decent amount of removal, and I have some ways to loot for them. Oh man, this looks like a great hand if it just had one more land. So I've got a mulligan. That's another one lander. Are we going to five? Okay, keeping. Let's toss a smuggler's cop. And, um, dude, it might actually have to be Feed the Swarm. All right. If they play a big Trellis Era or Voice of the Blessed, I'm going to regret bottoming that Feed the Swarm, but my hand's composition would fall apart without these three cards. You know, maybe I could have done without um, 
and Soul Artifact just went on the Smuggler's Copter Silent Raven plan. I keep calling it Silent Raven, Silver Riven, Silver Raven. Yeah, there we go. Okay, good. It wasn't a voice of the blessed. It's Johnny's pride mate. I drew the Fiend of the Swarm anyways. Um, all right, let's get a island. Go smug cop. I mean, no, maybe I go Fiend the Swarm. Like, we're in a little bit of danger. Like, I don't think I can take a hit here, so. Yeah, let's just kill that. We lose two. Okay, they didn't have another one. Good. No Voice of the Blessed, no Trellisera. Uh, silent. I keep calling it silent, dude. Silver Raven. Let's just play Smuggler's Cop here. Start the loot train. Pass the turn. All right, triple essence warden. Dang steel citadel. Um, I think I'll skilled animator here and suit up the dark steel, and then we'll crew up the the smuggler's cop. They're getting a whole ton of life though. I'm basically hitting them for zero here. All right, so we get the 5-5 five, five Indestructible. No! Okay, but I don't mind the mana right now, honestly. There's a Trellis Arrow. That's a problem. All right, that's a really fat problem, like your mom. So I have five more removal spells to draw into, and I have two scries to help me find them. Okay, so if they don't gain any more life here, I can technically get in for a chonky hit. That's not it, dude. That's not it. If I play my three creatures, that Trellisera is going to get nine 1-1 one, one counters and scry nine. I don't think I can let them do that. I think I just ensoul my Mizval Bridge and smash for 10. Do I just have to keep back an indestructible blocker? <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> Let's get in with the bridge and keep back the Dark Steel Citadel. Actually, no, I should have... I should have kept back the, the Miss Vault Bridge because, because um, if they kill the skilled anime, oh, dude, why I keep on having to educate people on this, but like you don't, you're not supposed to put Sarah Ascendant in your Soul Sisters decks. They, I know Modern Proc and Soul Sisters look similar, but they're two completely different entities. You, the Sarah Ascendant only fits in Martyr proc because the whole point of that deck is to get a bunch of white cards in your hand and crack the Martyr and gain up to over 30 so you can get your Sarah Ascendant online. It doesn't work with sisters. And I, I hope people one day realize that. I see it happen all the time where people put their Sarah Ascendants in Soul Sisters decks. It's like, it's not the same thing. All right, Smuggler's Copter is good because it doesn't count as a creature, so it's not going to give him a ping of life gain. And uh, let's go to combat and uh, smash for five, I guess, and try to not allow them to get over 30. All 
Or, oh, Windbrisk is the problem. If they can hide, like, a, a Miria's Call under there, or, like, a Archangel of Thune, then we're in some big trouble. A land. Okay, um, well, let's screw up this mug cop here so we can try to scry. What if I just... No, I can only get in with the smuggler's copter. Yeah. Get in there. Loot. Please give me removal. Dang it. What do? I mean, I can block the trellis air with my indestructible guys. But the problem is if I make them gain enough with the... Like, they'll get in range of Sarah Ascendant. They'll get in range of Sarah Ascendant. If I play three dudes, I want to scry though. I really want to scry. Okay, let's ditch the watery grave. Okay, let's 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 play one silver. Call it Riven again, Silver Raven. I keep on calling it Silver Riven, Silent Raven. Like I can never call it the right name. They get to scry again. Dude, every time I play a creature, they scry three. That's kind of wild. Push. There it is. There it is. Do I play a creature? Do I play a creature? I mean, we're too, we're too deep, right? We're in too deep. I think I just play it. No, because like, if I play the creature, it puts them to 24. Meaning that if they can play two creatures, then they gain enough to turn on Ceres, and I don't think I can. I think I just gotta pass. And they can turn on Windbrisk. They're not gonna- oh, they just have the Archangel of Thune, alright. Yeah, I'm dead. Big rip. We almost had it, dude. We almost came back. But we're not gonna beat an Archangel. There's no way. Um, if only I had a torpor orb, do I have anything for their shenanigans? Void mirror stops Miria, or whatever you call it, Windbrisk Heights. Pithing needle stops Windbrisk Heights. I think we just submit it right back. We can do this. This is possible, especially on the play. We mulligan to five there. So if we keep our seven, we're probably good. Cause like you saw how close that was on a million to five. So we should totally overwhelm them on a on a on a seven card keep, right? Yeah, this is this'll do. I have nothing to do in the second turn, but I can push something. All right, Vault Scourge, go. <laughs> Skilled Animator. I know a lot of those. So many people are getting into animation nowadays, it's insane. And everyone's like getting so good at it. I think I pushed the sister, right? Gets him for one, we'll take it. Nothing, okay. Then I, I think I am gonna push the sister because if they draw their second land and play like a Voice of the Blessed or Trellis or whatever, or Johnny's Prime Mate, it won't get any bigger. So and they didn't have a, a second one drop sister, so I think this is good. Capitalize, on, oh, they have that thing. All right. Insult. Do I just get out Mindling Mech here? Um, or do I Skilled Animator on the Vault Scourge? Or do I Insult? Okay, let's get out the Mindling Mech. 
It's gonna be one less damage overall, but I guess the summoning sickness out of the way. Rancor in a sister deck? They're really going for that one-shot combo, aren't they? All right, skilled animator, and I think we're gonna do it on our Vault Scourge. Turn it into a 5-5. Five five. Yeah, you can gain a life. And crew up the Mindlink mech. It's not gonna copy anything important, but it's still gonna be able to swing for four. So get in there for nine, put them to 10, and I gain five. Back up to 18. So it's gonna be hard for them to one-shot us here, I'm assuming. I'm assuming. They had to have kept that seven card hand for a reason. A seven card one lander hand for a good reason. Like they probably have like the nuts combo in their hand. Another soul warden. All right, I think let's just, uh, let's just insole up the Darksteel Citadel and crew up the Mindling Mech and just keep on smashing. All right, getting there for 14, they're forced to chump. And I can gain five and go up to 20. And they have a path. All right, they're pathing the Vault Scourge. Um, let's get a island. They're at two. All right, we're super close. Angel of Vitality, I don't care. I mean, it keeps them alive. I almost just said Silent Raven again. Silver Raven. Another insult, dude. We're just we're just going all out. We're going in. Crew up there and smash for 14 again, not let up at all. Force more chumps. This is so beefy. How are they coming back? Trellisera, I can beat that. It's too late for that. You had to play that on turn two or else it's not doing enough. Oh, they say this is my list, but... Okay, so with with my jank. Okay, their my list with their jank because I did not play some of this stuff in here, but they are playing my list, so that's cool. They they edited it. That was cool. GG. All right. Well, let's just go for a skill animator. On the mind link mech. And smash for 15 and they are taking it death got there against soul sisters nice they got dude you gotta be playing voice of the blessed in there dire wolf that's uh, okay they're playing my list but this that was back when voice of the blessed didn't exist so I'm just letting you know dire wolf you might not know that card exists but look up that card voice of the blessed it is made soul sisters insane like i feel like soul sisters could be meta but just nobody's nobody's like experiencing experimenting with it right now but i think it could be meta like it's monstrous right now it's so good gg
All right, hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited and uncut from the videos, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD from last Saturday. In this case, it's Thursday because Kamigawa came out this Thursday. So if you want to see the rest of this VOD, it's there on Thursday. Um, come out in future stream if you want to catch the gameplay live, play against me if you like. We stream every Saturday. Although, like I said in the intro, I, I know it's confusing me saying all these dates and all, but we might change it to Fridays. Not totally sure yet. I'll keep you guys updated. Um, I'll, I'll post like a community post about it if I do end up changing the schedule. Anyways, um, we got one round we're spitting up today. This was the longest game. And you might see... Um, when we get to the wrap up, you're going to hear me say that we got a lot of like mana screw and mana flood today and that I might actually cut some rounds from the video because of that. And that is exactly what I did. So there was two rounds I cut. One was against Jund, just like regular standard Jund, um, that I ended up cutting because we got extremely flood, like the biggest flood of my life. We ended up drawing like six lands in a row, like literally had nothing. <laughs> and it was just not entertaining. And then uh, another game we cut against Demir Fairies. And it was because, um, I mean, it was going well, but then game number three, I ended up mulliganing a one lander to six and then to another one lander, mulliganing to five and then mulliganing to four off all one landers, triple one lander in a row. Like we're a 21 land deck. I don't think that should really happen. And so we mulligan all the way down to four and then we proceed to just get inquisitioned. And we literally are, we're down to like two cards in hand and couldn't do a single thing. And yeah, just completely died to mana screw. And then uh, in this match, uh, we're going up against a multicolor tribal and it wasn't Domain Zoo, but it was Multicolor Tribal. And uh, game number one pretty well, but we lost in games two and three to guess what? Luris value. Hooray. <laughs> that is a card that should have been banned last week on, on January 25th when the modern bans did not happen. Everyone wanted Luris to get banned and it didn't. And guess what? It destroyed us here. So we can't deal with all that value. And with that, let's go on to the wrap up. Hope you enjoyed. All right, let's talk about some Demir vehicles for Modern, some Kamigawa vehicle tribal. Now, on day one of a set release, it's typically a really important video. You know, you're going to have a lot of new viewers on the channel and you want to produce some really good, high quality, exciting content. But unfortunately, we got a lot, I mean, a lot of one land openers today and had to mulligan a bunch because of it. And then on top of having like insane mana screw a lot, we even had like two or three games where we got extremely flooded. So it was just a very unbalanced day. And that's unfortunate that it had to be on day one of Kamigawa release. It's not usually like that. It's just, we all have those days in Magic the Gathering. They come and go. And unfortunately it just happened to be on a very important day. So hopefully the next video goes a little bit better. Who knows? I haven't edited the video yet, but who knows? Maybe I'll cut out some of that and just keep the video shorter just to kind of just showcase off the decks good moments instead of mana flood and mana screw moments. And so maybe I'll, it'll be like a shorter, maybe three or four round video because of that. Um, we'll see how it goes. But I really, really enjoy Mind Link Mech. I think it was a powerhouse. And every time it got out there and started attacking, it was great. Like there was a couple times where we had to crew up with the do nothing skilled animator. I think once we had to crew up with the silver Raven and, um, and then it didn't really copy anything of value. But when it copied any of these three, and it was a lot better. Um, but now that brings me to the next question is, is it worth splashing black? And, um, you know, when you think about vehicles, there it's like a two part transaction. There's you got the crewers and you got the vehicles. If you're going up against a hyper interactive deck, they can easily pick apart one of those and the other part of that doesn't work without the other. You can have the vehicles all you want, but if you have nothing to crew them, they're not going to do anything, right? So I'm thinking that what you can do to remedy that to be more resilient is to have man lands like Mutavault and Blink Moth Nexus. But if you have that, then it's going to be a lot harder to go Demir. So if I were to build this deck, I would probably build it in mono blue so that I can run like Mutavault and Blink Moth Nexus so that if my crewers die, I'll still have the man lands to crew the vehicles. So that is something that I would recommend doing. 
it's going to hurt to lose some of the best crewers in Night Market Lookout and, and Night of the Ebon Legion because they're really great to crew with because they, they work so well with the vehicles and especially the Mindlink mech copying them. But there's got to be a lot of good things in every color for Mindlink mech to copy that is a one or two drop. And I just, I haven't really put a lot of thought into it yet, but there's got to be some things in blue that just is like when it attacks loot or when it attacks just draw a card just when it deals damage to a player like there's got to be stuff like that somewhere in blue if you have any ideas of some mono blue stuff or colorless stuff that mind link mech can clone that is a non-legendary let me know in the comments down below because there's got to be something maybe we'll revisit vehicles pretty soon here and try it again in mono blue to make it a lot more consistent and a lot more resilient because i think those are parts where it falls there's those times where it falls apart when one of the pieces gets picked apart and maybe, uh, maybe you don't even need removal in the main deck. I don't know. We'll see about that. Anyways, if you are new here, thank you for watching and consider subscribing because if you like modern brewing, that is all we do every single Monday and Friday as we have been doing for the past four and a half years. And we're going to be playing every possible modern viable Kamigawa Neon Dynasty card here on the channel. So stay tuned for all of that. If you want to see your favorite Kamigawa cards played, they will see play here. I can... I can tell you that for sure. So that's going to do it. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe if you're new. And a huge thanks to our Patreon supporters for making this channel possible. Their names are scrolling on screen. And if you would like to help monetize this channel as well, you can find the Patreon link down below. And if you need to pick up some magic cards, TCGplayer.com's got you covered. You can find them through our deck list link down below, and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some magic online, you should sign up with Mana Traders using the code that's listed in the description to save 15%, and you can rent and play all the magic decks you want. It is what I personally use to make my videos. And of course, all the links are down below in the description. Again, thank you so much for watching the video, and I'll catch you in the next one.